Now yesterday we were thinking about what it was to be able to smell. And so closely associated with the sense of smell is the sense of taste. The two are in many ways linked together, I think smelling and tasting and in fact they're also associated with sight. I mean take for example that I show you a picture of a beautiful meal or a beautiful cake or something. Better still what if I bring you into the kitchen and you see it on the table and then you begin to smell it immediately you can nearly have a sense of taste as well going on there's something about all of that it, it, it's all working together and that's the way we're designed by God so that things chemically and physically and physiologically will be happening within us that make it possible that we are both attracted to eat that and when we do eat that, that we can eat it healthily and our body will be able to use it for energy and protein and all the other needs that we have. So when I ask you the question, what are your favourite foods? I'm sure some of them have to do with taste. Some of them may well have to do with smell and taste. And some of them may well have to do with smell, taste and touch. I think about Percy Pigs. You know those things we used to think were made in the UK. Then when Brexit came, we discovered they were made in Germany. Strangely, that's nothing wrong with that, of course, but it does seem strange to have to get a Percy Pig all the way from Germany to Marks and Spencer's. But I like Percy Pigs because they have a kind of a chewiness to them. And I don't know what it is, but, you know, I sometimes, I must like that. It's like chewing a bit of rubber, you know, like a, a piece of octopus. You know, that would be similar. Strange, but I like that sort of chewiness. Or, for example, I really do like the taste of burnt toast. Seems good if you're, you know, maybe not too good at setting the, the, the various guide for temperature and so on. I really like the burned edges of the meat, the little bits that people maybe cut off, you know. Or something like complex flavours, blue cheese, certain chocolates, you know, that may have got strange things within them, you know, a little bit of chilli in the chocolate and so forth. So, you know, these are the tastes that I like. Why do I like these tastes? That's a very interesting question too, because I didn't always like them. There are basic tastes that we all have. Sweet, salty, sour and bitter. And there's another one now that they call umami. And it's a kind of a sour taste as well. What has taste got to do with everything? Well, taste assists us in knowing what to eat. Sometimes, if it's a bit off, for example, and you take something, it tastes bad, your capacity to taste that means you spit it out or you don't want it. And that may be protecting you from something that might harm you or make you feel unwell. And so taste is a way to guide us to healthy and nutritious foods. For example, say you eat something sweet. Sweet things, energy, carbohydrates. A mother's milk is very sweet and it's so designed that the, the infant is attracted to that which gives it energy. Umami is protein. Protein will build us up. Salt, whenever we need minerals. And the sour and the bitter taste warns us against dangerous foods that might not be so good for us. Try eating you know, some of the foods you get along the highways and byways. Some of them are excellent for us, of course, when we know. We do often talk about people having lost their taste for things or no appetite. And yet when you start to think about taste as a sense, bringing it into scripture, it's used in scripture on many occasions. It's used for as a healthy metaphor. For example, in Psalm 34, verse 8, we read, O taste and see that the Lord is good. You might say, well, how can I taste? Well, of course, what the writer is trying to do, he's trying to help us take an experience in one area of our lives and transfer it into another crucial area of our lives. So when we think about tasting, we have to actually come into contact, experience and engage with that thing personally and closely. And so he's saying to us, to engage with God in this same way. So important that we're able to do that. So, and you'll not believe it, but I've just had my dinner since I last spoke. There's a little gap. So I've been away to taste some interesting tastes, and now I'm back. Thinking about tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, we were talking about experiencing, engaging, and personally, closely getting to know the Lord. 
In order to help us think of this, God has given us his word to draw us into that close place. So when you read things like, say, Job 34.3, it says, For the ear tests words as the palate tastes food. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? The parallel there. And Psalm 119, verse 103 says, How sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So isn't there a sense here in which, as we think about taste, it's a way to prove and to appreciate the attractiveness of something. So as we think about Scripture, Scripture becomes something that we can really appreciate the way we can appreciate honey and the sweetness of honey. If we didn't know the one, we might not press on to appreciate the other, if you get my drift. If you didn't know the sweetness of the taste of the honey, would you then press on to get to know the sweetness of the taste of Scripture? Jeremiah fifteen sixteen says, Your words were found, and I ate them, and became they became a joy and a delight of my heart. Which is reinforcing the same truth. So I ask myself this question, how do I acquire the taste for something? How do I acquire the taste for the Lord? How do I develop the taste for Scripture that leads me to experience the Lord? You know how people say things like, I acquired, it's an acquired taste. For some people that's coffee or tea. Or for children, it could be vegetables. You know, how many children don't eat vegetables? I know in our family there were at least one, one of our children could not have a vegetable even on their plate, it seemed, for a long time. How do you help them develop a love for, a taste for. Well, I was checking this out and researching this, and some of the wise, uh, well, cooks and chefs and so forth advised that if you want people to develop a taste, especially for things like vegetables, which don't always have a great taste, put a little bit of sugar, a little soy sauce. Instead of boiling them, why not roast them? And maybe parboil, like, say, for example, Brussels sprouts. Parboil them for two or three minutes, slice them, put them in the pan, and then put them with maybe uh, chestnuts, uh, soy sauce, or something else, and you'll be amazed how you'll turn something that was boring into something really beautiful. And there's a sense in which the, the bringing together of different tastes there can really assist each other. And I was thinking about this with regard to Scripture because some people find parts of the Bible quite unpalatable. But that's maybe only because they, they, they have them on their own. You need to see that Scripture needs to sit alongside each other. So if you're struggling through, for example, uh, parts of the Old Testament, then we've got to try and link it up with the New Testament, which brings it to life. That which we see in shadow in the Old Testament is seen in fullness in Jesus. It's what we were talking about last week when we were in Luke 24, the very thing. And so you start to realize how that it takes a little bit of skill. Cooking is a skill. And a really good chef can use their skill to do things to your taste buds that you experience these things in new ways. And I think that's what we need to help each other to do with the Bible so that we get a taste for the Bible, and it really is like honey. And, I mean, I would certainly encourage us that we would maybe not, you know, take so much of it at the time. So smaller sections of the Bible, we might eat slowly, and that we might do it with a good food guide alongside us, someone who can help us understand what it is that we're eating, as it were, that we're reading. And it may even be we need to add other parts of Scripture to it to get the blend correctly, that we know a sense of the whole story. For example, that where judgment is, there's grace. And by doing this, I think we will help ourselves to develop and acquire the taste for Scripture through which we will get the taste and we will taste the Lord. And we will discover, as the Scripture says, that the Lord is good. Well, tomorrow we're going to think about another one of our senses, and on Friday we'll finish. But anyway, great to be with you, and the Lord bless you today. 
in whatever you do and I hope you have both good food and I hope you develop your taste for the Lord.